This is Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love, Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Verse 4, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. All right, I'm going to stop there. Now we're going to Psalms 83, and this is what some of the folks are going through. And God knows, and he hears your heart. Keep not thou silent, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. We're seeing that happening in these days right now. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. So let me share this. Sometimes, you know, we wonder why all hell is breaking loose. Uh, trouble on the left, trouble on the right, trouble above, trouble below. It's like every way you turn, there's something jumping off. There's something going cuckoo. But you have to remember who you're in. And for those of you who are not in Christ, you have to remember who you need to be in. Because it makes all the difference when you're in the ultimate painkiller. That's Jesus Christ. So listen, when you see all this stuff going on, understand it's not a war against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against wickedness in high places. And there, there is a lot of wickedness in high places. There, there are demons that are on assignment against God's people. On assignment. They have you marked in their, in their visual. They've got that little scope and they've got a beam on you. And they are determined to yank the carpet out from under you. If the foundation be destroyed, what will we do, Lord? That's what Psalm says. So you have to know that what the demonic is trying to do is destroy our very foundation. So one of the things we must do is be bound together in love. Not fight each other, but be bound together in love. We also must seek God's face at every moment, at every turn. Sometimes we don't realize we're to seek him word for word. There are times that we deal with different people and we don't realize Satan is trying to stir some mess. And if we're not careful and we're not constantly praying, we'll jump in that mess and create an explosion. But when you're seeking God, when the principalities and the wickedness and high places and the, the demons and the, the, the princes of regions and all of that are, are activating all kind of mess, you have to remember at every given moment, even in basic mundane conversations, Satan is steadily trying to meddle, ste steadily trying to stir up the flames of adversity, stir up the flames of strife and opposition. So what you have to, as long as you're mindful of it and you see, you smell them, you feel them in the atmosphere, you constantly, okay, Lord, help me know what to say. Help me know how to address this. Help me know how to react to this person. Help me know how to respond. Help me know, give me words of wisdom. Help me to be a sower of peace, not a sower of wrath and strife. Help me, Lord, give me wisdom. And every step of the way, God will help you if you're seeking him at every step of the way.
So we have to be careful not to get caught up in the winds of adversity because we can be swept up just like the chaff. We can be swept up in that wind. And that wind can take you places you had no intentions of going. That's why some of you are in prison right now. That's why some of you are mourning the death of a loved one who died at your hands right now because you gave in to the wind. As they say in the streets, go with the flow, baby. No, you cannot afford to go with the flow. Your mind may tell you you're right. Your mind may tell you that what you're doing and what you're saying is altogether correct. And it may be. But your attitude and your delivery may be stirring up and opening the doors for the demonic to come in and use you or use them. So you have to constantly ask God to fine tune you to the love of the Holy Spirit. Or you can end up doing way more damage than good while you're trying to do what's right. While you're trying to say what's right. And while you're trying to rectify the situation, you've got to be careful how you go about it. Because you may not be the best approach. And you might be better praying about some things than handling it. All right. Now, let's move on to... Raw, let's see, what did I say the last one was? Romans 13. I may be wrong, but I got so many. It'll be all right. Romans 13. And we're going to do Ezekiel 9, too. I'm reminding myself. All right. Okay, Romans 13. Go with me. Starting at verse. Let me see. Starting at verse. 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. There are times when we don't realize we're changing clothes. We go on stage, we come off stage, we get back, we come out of our costume and we get on our regular street clothes. Well, there are times we live our lives that way. We're on stage one minute, we're off stage in the next. And we don't realize that we have a multiple personality disorder because one personality is orchestrated by the Holy Spirit and the other personality is orchestrated by the devil. And boy, after a while, you know, we get lost in it. Can't afford to do that. The Holy Spirit will keep you. He will keep you. But you have to keep leaning on the Holy Spirit. Um, there are times when we don't realize that we're being used as puppets by the major puppeteer of evil. We don't realize it. And a lot of times what's going on in this society is you've got heads of state, you've got governors, you've got Congress, you've got the, the president, the vice president, you've got kings, queens, you've got uh, um, aristocrats of all different levels and all different power structures. And what happens? They're leaning to their own understanding. They're operating out of their own knowledge, their own wisdom, the human side. They're leaning to their flesh. And they don't realize that they're, they're stirring up stuff amongst each other. They're feeding into each other's hunger. And one of the hungers that are out there that is perpetuating sin, treachery, human trafficking, murder, assassinations, apartheid, uh, genocide, whatever you want to call it, all the ides are being generated by the demons that are pulling your little mind strings, your heart strings, your emotional strings. And some of you are operating out of greed. Some of you are operating out of pride and prejudice. They both go hand in hand, you know. 
Pride and Prejudice. That That's why the title works so perfectly. They go hand in hand. It's almost like the left hand, the right hand. Pride and Prejudice, they work together. Yes, so seamlessly. And what ends up happening is pride and prejudice, just like the the food administration and the and the uh and the the pharmaceutical companies, they work hand in hand. The pharmaceuticals put out, I mean the food industry puts out the bad food with all the dangerous ingredients. And while people are getting sicker and sicker, that fattens the the pockets of the ph pharmaceuticals. And while the pharmaceuticals are getting fattened and fattened, they grease the palm of the Food and Drug Administration. That's why it's the Food and Drug Administration. So what I'm trying to share with you, this works on all levels. This works in your kitchen, in your bathroom, in your bedroom, in your house. And it works at the highest levels. The same demons. But for new levels, there are new devils. So what the devil does is he pulls out the more uh, fiery, the more potent demons to handle the highest levels in order to bring it all under his control. And as long as we allow ourselves to be orchestrated by the flesh at whatever level, we're operating under, self, under Satan's anointing. Filled with the Holy Ghost, that with a mighty burning fire. Guess what? We're still yielding. And for that moment, as the Bible says, for whom you yield yourself to, that is who your master is. <laughs> so listen to this. We're looking now at, let me see. I want to go to Ezekiel 9 because these are the consequences of the yielding. These are the consequences of us being driven by vanity. Um, I want to read a word to you real quick. All right. I want to read this word. It's in one of these scriptures. I forgot, but I know the Lord wants me to read this. You know how the Lord talks about avoiding vanity and the works of the flesh and all this kind of stuff. Well, these are one of the things I wanted to describe because this is something we don't realize it's, it's involved in the word of vanity. Many of us get caught up in vain things. Many of us get caught up in vain ideas, vain emotions, vain vain goals, vain vain money making. I mean whatever it's vanity. And one of the meanings of vanity is futility, uselessness, pointlessness, worthlessness, purposelessness. Okay? fruitlessness, profitlessness, comes to nothing. It's a waste. Like Pat said, don't cast your pearls before a swine and don't give that which is holy unto the dogs. Well, see, there are times we, we give that which is holy unto those that don't really want what you got to offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why some of you are involved in relationships with the opposite sex that you should have cut loose a long time ago. Because it's so pointless now. When they get ready, they can sock you dead in your eye and you're still right there in their corner. That's a waste. That's giving that which is holy unto the dogs. That's casting your pearls before swine. Wasting your love on people that don't give a hoot about you. All right. Now, let's go on to this. Uh, um... Vanity. Vanity deals with conceit, self-conceit, narcissism, self-love, self-admiration, self-regard, self-absorption, self-obsession, self-centeredness, egotism, and on and on. Pride, haughtiness, arrogance, whatever. Now, the thing I want to share with you is what the dictionary also says about it. And these are some of the things that lend themselves to these problems of us being whipped around by whatever wind comes. Excessive pride in or admiration of one's own appearance or achievements or whatever. You know, we have to be careful 
not to think. The Bible says, don't think too highly of yourself. Now that means don't think too highly of yourself in your profession. Don't think too highly of yourself in your ministry. As we talked earlier, don't think too highly of yourself in your degrees and your accolades and your accomplishments. Don't think too highly of yourself in your own mother wit. Don't think too highly of yourself because what you'll end up doing is competing, is pushing, is uh, judging. You'll end up looking down at this one's uh, approach. You'll end up looking down at that one. They're not in Christ yet, but they have a good heart. You know what? <laughs> Let me share this with you. Some of you don't realize there are some sinners out there that have a better heart than you do, and you're full of the Holy Ghost. How does that happen? Sounds like a contradiction, doesn't it? No, there are some people that are gifted to love. And when God gives a gift, it comes in a lot of times through the birth canal. That gift is given before you draw your first breath. So you're automatically given to love. You're automatically given to mercy, to kindness, to patience. You're given that. But when the Holy Ghost comes on you once you've given your life to the Lord, then that gift is anointed and it bears much fruit. Then it's a whole nother ball game, a whole new world. So whatever you do, you have to concentrate on doing everything God's way. Because see, God's bringing judgment. And he's not bringing judgment on his people. The Bible says judgment begins at the house of God. Well, that's a daily thing. We're constantly under scrutiny in God's love, in his kingdom. We're constantly under scrutiny because God wants us to be the best we can be. But when we deal with the world, when we deal with the principalities, when we deal with the powers that be, when we deal with people in different positions, people who have clout, who have money, who have all kind of, of influence, listen to this. We're going to Ezekiel 9. This is a loaded word, so I'm trying to try not to bog you down with an hour-long message. Okay. Sometimes I get so much information, I feel like I feel like a juggler. Okay, starting at verse 1. He cried also in mine ears. Let me make sure I'm reading from that, yes. With a loud voice saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near. Even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of God of Israel, the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house, and he called to the men clothed in linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, throughout the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. That's God's people interceding. There's a mark on us, y'all. It's invisible to the naked eye. But God sees it plain as day. The angels see it plain as day. The demons see it plain as day. Verse 5, And to the others he said, In mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly and young, so, sorry, slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. Judgment begins at the house of God. 
Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. You know, this is scary right here. Because that, see, I know it looks like I'm always emphasizing fine tooth, uh, fine tune your walk with the Lord. Get all the little fragments, all the little vain efforts, all the little silly ideas and the little petty emotions. Get all that out the way. Keep them out the way. Because every time you yield, you chance a moment that can be wasted, that God can anoint, but it becomes contaminated by the flesh. So we have to be very careful. We have to constantly seek inner healing, seek deliverance, seek holiness, hunger for holiness, get in his word, learn all that God requires of us, because what he requires is for our good. God doesn't need us. He wants us, and he wants us to want him, but we need him. So whatever you do, you have to be careful. Step by step, don't step in a puddle. As the little kids used to say, don't step on a crack. I mean, be very careful. Don't step on broken glass. Because many of you live your lives walking through minefields. One minute everything's nice, the sun is shining, God is good. And the next minute you're in a minefield and there's broken glass and there are hidden grenades and explosions over here and explosions over there and you get cut and you get wounded and you cut and you wound others while you're getting cut and wounded yourself. Why? Because you're not being mindful of where you place your next step. You're not being mindful of your very next reaction. You're not being mindful of your words or your tone. You're not being mindful of the sins that you know you have a tendency to fall into. You're not being mindful of the kind of people you should not be around ever, ever, ever for your soul's sake. You're not being mindful of the things you should not watch on YouTube, the things you should not watch on TV, the movies you should not go to watch in the movies. There are certain movies you need to stay as far away from them as you want demons to stay away from you. Now, when you read that God is going to judge, he's going to bring judgment, and he's saying, spare not. We have to do everything in our power to stay out of harm's way. I've seen situations where a person was headed home, headed home, and they got sidetracked. They got caught up. They went to the store, ran into somebody they used to know back in the day, painting a scenario. And they hook up and they talk. They stand there talking for 20, 30 minutes. And before you know it, one thing leads to the other come on, hang out with me. I'm, I'm going to go over here. Just, just for a few minutes. I haven't seen you for years. And instead of going straight home, they hang out. I'm making um, an analogy. This is not literal. So they hang out. And while they're hanging out, the person says, come on, take this run with me real quick. I just got to drop off something. And they take a run. And what happens? Their life has changed forever because the lights are going off behind them. Why are they going off? The person that you hooked up with is wanted by the law. You're sitting in the car and you have no idea that that car you're sitting in with that person you haven't seen for years who's just got to make a little quick run has got some major dope sitting in their trunk. You don't know that. If you had gone home, it wouldn't have been your business. But you don't know it. So you, you're enjoying, because you remember you used to really have fun with this person, even though you're not, uns you know, because you're saved and they're not. And you figured maybe you could witness to this person. See, what you do, you've got to do on God's terms and on God's turf. Th these are the little foxes that can spoil the vine. 
Now you're being handcuffed and you're being taken in because of your association. You may not even remember that person's last name or maybe even their first name. You might have called them by Nick by their street name and don't even know what their real name is. You don't know what they're into, but you want to hang out because you're tired of being lonely. Okay, now, so here we are walking this life and you think that you can de d divvy over here and detour over there and, and you could check this out, check that out. But you know, I'm going to share this with you. You got to almost de determine to walk and talk this out like you're on a tightrope. Not because you're going to go to hell at every wrong move you make. We all fall short of the glory of God. Just a given. But you got to be found trying. Because when you're found trying at every moment, at every moment, God will be found warning you to protect you from making a poor choice, from making, from going on that detour, for hooking up with that wrong person. He'll keep you focused. You're going there. Keep going. Don't move to the left. Don't move to the right. Don't you slide, baby, because you may end up in a ditch. Don't go down that road. You're trying to do a shortcut. Be patient. Slow your roll, baby. Sit your little happy hips down and be still and know that he is God, not you. See, that's where these people in these high places, that's where you're going to see a lot of judgment going down. You're going to see a whole lot of people you never thought were touchable, baby. You think of them as the untouchables of high society because they got the almighty dollar. They got all the clout, all the influence, all the connections, all the, oh my goodness, they got it all. But guess what? They don't have God. And they forget that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. So you have to know that when you start moving forward, you've got to take care of your business. Yeah, I'm saying it's street, business. Because all these other people, you're going to see judgment. We're entering into a season of judgment. We're going to have multiplied deaths. We've already had them, but we're still having them. And you're going to see folks getting arrested, baby. You're going to see stuff exposed to the whole world on major media that you never thought could ever happen. Because God's anvil, and I see it right now, his anvil, like the judge's hammer, is coming down. Bow! And it's going to echo throughout the world. And you're going to see some folks' business being exposed. You didn't even know they were into that mess. You thought that was the book of, of uh, fantasies. That was for make-believe. No, honey, it's really happening. Child sacrifices, human trafficking, demonic worship, things dedicated to the devil, all the plans and the agendas, all that's going to start being exposed, y'all. God's hand is coming down really heavy. This is not the time to make allowances for yourself because you got a right, because God understands. This ain't the time to lean on his understanding. This is the time to lean on his holiness, on the power of his Holy Ghost to help you keep it straight and keep it on the narrow. So I admonish you who are walking with God, stick so close to him that you hear his heartbeat. Whatever you do, don't get so easily distracted. Don't sleep your life away. Don't kick back with the dust collecting on your Bible while the devil is pulling all kind of mind trips on you. Many of you in YouTube, many of you in these other churches, you have no clue the arsenal God has put right in the palm of your hand. Because your churches are not teaching you spiritual warfare. 
They're not teaching you how to battle these demons, these ideas of suicide, these feelings of loneliness, these attitudes of anger and intolerance and impatience, aggravation. Jump off at the, at the, at, I mean, one minute you're laughing and joking, the next minute you're angry and irritated. That ain't normal. And you got to acknowledge that. Take authority over that crap. Don't allow it. Just because you've been that way all your life. That's the flesh. That's vanity. Leave that crap alone. Turn to God for all of your changes. Turn to God every moment of every hour. Stop the allowances. And as long as you stay as close to that straight and narrow as you possibly can. And seek help. Seek uh, counsel. Seek prayer. Some of y'all need professional counsel. But the bottom line is you get all the help you can coming through the channel of God. Because you want to make sure that you understand why. Some, some things, once you understand why you do it, you stop doing it. It's, you don't need it anymore. So what ends up happening is healing comes, deliverance comes, and you're protected because you are doing everything in every way. Lord, I'm getting ready to talk to this person. I got to do this business transaction, but Lord, you know, they get on my nerves. You know, they got those ways that make me want to jump out the box. Lord, help me before I even pick this phone up. Help me regulate my attitude, regulate my heart, regulate my whole, my whole being so that I respond in a way that glorifies you at every word, at every moment. See, when you seek that kind of help, you get that kind of help. But if you ain't seeking that kind of help, one minute you're anointed and you're holy, and the next minute you're showing your unroyal behind. So that's what I'm talking about. Because when judgment comes, you want to make sure that you're more consistently walking in the spirit. If you're more consistently walking in the spirit, the weather won't catch you off guard. The weather won't catch you with your drawers down. The weather won't catch you with your shoes off. Mm -hmm. The weather won't push you out that box. And when you watch God's anvil come down and stuff starts breaking out, you can sit comfortably knowing you're under his covering. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And when you're abiding like that, see, okay, thank you, Lord, thank you. This is what it's like to abide. And this is what it's like to constantly go in and out, in and out. You're sitting in the house. You got a house full of kids, you got company. The adults are sitting in the house or sitting on the porch. And they're pretty much going to stay where they are unless they go to the restroom or grab a bite or a drink. But the kids, they run in, they run out, they run in, they run out, they run in, they run out. They're tracking dirt in and out of the house because they're playing out in the yard and they're tracking in and they play. They don't know why they're coming in. And half the time, they don't know why they're going out. But they're restless and they got ants in the pants and they need to dance and they're going in and going out, going in and going out. But what happens? What the adults say, look, you either going to come in and stay in or you're going to go out and stay out. All this in and out ain't happening. Well, I feel the spirit of God saying for some of you born again Christians, all this in and out ain't happening. Make up your mind. Who are you going to be? You going to be in Christ or you going to be in the streets? You're going to be under the holiness and, and the governor of the Holy Spirit, or you're going to be out there acting and talking a fool. Which is it going to be? No more allowances. No more in and out. No more double-mindedness. Get it together or leave it alone. Because God's anvil is coming down, y'all. Playtime is over. It's get-down time.
It's get down time, y'all. It's time for us to, to grow up. Mm -hmm. Put on Christ. Mm -hmm. And let's get on the good foot. Because when the crap hits the fan, like Ezekiel chapter 9 said, when the crap hits the fan, you don't want the crap getting on you. You out there in the streets and the crap hits the fan. Ain't no telling what might happen to you. Figuratively speaking, you out there in your flesh. You out there telling somebody what for and please don't do it no more. And God didn't tell you to act like that. Ain't no telling what will become of that interaction right there. All right. There's a story that I was sent a while back about a woman who decapitated her children. She cut their heads off. You have no idea what led up to that. And this is what I want to warn you about. And I'm closing on this warning. The demons are coming out in swarms, y'all. They're being conjured up. And we know it. We can see by the bizarre crap going on. The demons are being conjured up. Look at these heads of state. Look at these powerful people that are, that are allowing deaths and sicknesses because they have their agenda and their agenda is making money. And they're coming out from, from out from around all the limits of the law so they can literally get away with murder and prosper from it. Big time. Demons are coming out. This is your warning. Because the demons are coming out, I don't care how emotionally scarred you are. I don't care how hurt, wounded, or damaged you are. You cannot allow yourself to have fits of rage. You cannot allow yourself to line up with your emotions when you feel that wrath, that anger. You cannot allow yourself. It's better to end the conversation. It's better to walk out the door. You don't have to explain yourself. Got to go. Got an emergency to deal with. Yeah, you do. What's the emergency? You. You got to handle that, that flesh. Because if you don't handle your flesh, baby, that flesh is going to handle you. And you might be one of those weird stories like the woman that cut off her kid's head. You have no idea what led up to that. And you have no idea how close you are to committing the same kind of bizarre crimes. The crap's hitting the fan. Where are you right now in the Lord? Where are you? And what are you doing with all he gave you to do with? What are you doing with it? Sitting on it? Sticking it in the back drawer? What are you doing with it? Be very careful. Because these are dangerous times for everybody. And the only way you're going to escape is by seeking all your refuge in God, in Christ in his Holy Spirit, under the power of his Holy Spirit, under the authority of the name of Christ, binding demons, casting out demons, cutting things at the root, getting rid of stuff out of your life. You need to pursue inner healing and deliverance like you never pursued, like you, like you pursued the hottest piece of tail when you were young. You had to have it. That's the way you got to pursue all of the workings of God to be working and operative and successful in your life. All of his power. Seek it, baby, because you're going to need it in this day and age. We are all going to need his power like never before. I'm done. God bless you.